Hello, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and I am here to work on a very simple carve. This is video, the first video in, in a long while, uh, mostly because, as you guys know now, my uh, spindle kits have finally released, and I'm actually about to ship out the last of the pre-orders um, on Monday. So, and I've got 100 VFDs in a couple of days. <laughs> Sometime this, sometimes next week. What I have here, and I want to describe, I want to show you a cut from start to finish. Um, what's going on, this is a super simple cut. I just want to get in there, get the cut done, get it over with, so you can see exactly what's going on with the spindle, how I'm controlling this machine. And what I have here is an X-carve. Um, I've it's a fully upgraded X carve using the uh, Inventables upgrade kit. So it includes the Z, the uh, risers, and all that stuff. Um, I've also got a 0.8 kilowatt air cooled spindle on here, and I'll show you a close up here in a second. Um, actually, let's go ahead and I'll get you closer. <laughs> all right, here's a close up of what I've got set up. I've got my Fez tool uh, shop back. It's kind of late. So I didn't want to uh, make a whole bunch of noise with my uh, dust collector. So I've set up my X-Carve with my uh, Fez tool uh, suction back down there. It's about uh, a three, uh, wait, probably about four eighths of the way, um, like I guess that'd be three eighths, three eighths of the way suction turned on. So it's kind of low, um, which is perfect for my uh, V2 boot, which I have mounted on here. This is the one that hovers across the surface. And then of course I've got the spindle on there and I've got a, looks like this is an Amana tool uh, 51411. I believe that is. Yeah, that's, that's the correct one. It's the uh, 1 8 inch um, zero flute or O flute um, bit, which is perfect for acrylic and Lexan, which is what I have on here now. I've already used a uh, diamond drag bit to add a uh, surface on there. Um, it's basically a hexagon pattern. This is a panel. I'm carving my front doors to my uh, rat rig over there. What I have here, um, along with the 0.8 kilowatt air-cooled spindle, um, the air comes in here, shoots down through the sides down here, um, and right down, so it, that's how it cools the body of the uh, spindle, is it pulls air down here, pushes it down there. Um, here I've got a uh, my VFD. I've already got it configured for my, uh, I've already pre-programmed it, which is basically the same way you'd receive it. I do have my cover on the bottom so that my wires, um, there's no unexposed wires here. If you don't have this, uh, definitely recommend getting it. Um, I'm actually probably going to be lowering the price because it's kind of an important um, safety piece. So yeah, I'm still debating on that one. But um, I've got the VFD on here. It's already pre-programmed. Um, I've got it set to uh, 1400, roughly 1400, and I'm going to be controlling it through these uh, this red and uh, green buttons, as well as the little turn dial here. Right now, it's configured to the uh, hertz, uh, but when I start it, it actually jumps over to RPMs, which is what I've got it pre-programmed for. Um, but since this is a 400 watt spindle, I can see that 232 hertz is actually going to be sen uh, sent to the machine, which should put it right about 1400 RPMs. If I were to set this, since it's 400 hertz, if I set this to 200 hertz, it'll be 1200 whenever I turn it on. And of course, whenever I start run, it'll actually show 1200 right there on the screen. So you don't have to guess um, or do any conversions or anything like that. But um, it is flashing, which means it is not running. It's just in standby mode, ready to go. When I hit run, that thing will spin right up. Um, and we can actually, I can actually demonstrate it here. And it's already start to spin. Uh, spin. Um, it's spinning up pretty quickly. These are the uh, RPMs, of course. Um, should go up to roughly 1400. And let's say I want to have, um, let's say I want to have it at 1100. I'll just change this little dial here until it goes down to about 1100. That allows me to control the RPMs on the fly. Now, if this is uh, plugged into the controller, 
there will be a third line coming right out the bottom here. There's another zip tie down here on the bottom of the cover, which goes right into the, uh, the CNC controller. Let's go ahead and hit stop. It's gonna spin down and once it hits zero, it'll actually start flashing. The fan is on right now, but once it stops, it'll turn itself off here in just a few minutes once it cools down inside. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so I've got the, uh, I'm, I'm about to make some cut throughs. So I've got some uh, waste board, uh, spoil board right in between my bed and my uh, stock. I've got all that mounted up with my uh, anchors and my toe clamps and a couple of other types of clamps along the side here. Um, I think I'm ready. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this back up to 230 or 240 something, get where it was, it work. So, I'm ready to uh, run a cut. Um, oh, and by the way, I am running this with a uh, CNCJS uh, machine over there in the far left corner. You can see a Raspberry Pi I've got mounted. It's actually plugged right into the controller. So the Raspberry Pi is my brain um, to the, for the machine. There's the generic gerbil controller, uh, the Raspberry Pi um, on the Onefinity. The Pi is actually built into the controller so that you're actually interfacing with the Pi with this different software. What I'm doing is I've got uh, CNCJS installed onto that Pi and I'm accessing it from my um, laptop wirelessly. So my Pi is wired into my wireless network, my laptop's in the wireless network and allows me to connect the two and control it. I've already set the uh, zeros and all of that stuff. I've set the surface zero. We're literally ready to hit start. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It's gonna get kind of loud. Um, I'm going to allow the loudness to come through and allow you guys to hear it so you can actually see what um, a spindle actually does for you. And again, this is the 0.8 one. So this will be the quietest option I have. The only thing quieter would be the 0.8 water cooled. Um, again, this is the air cooled, so it'd be slightly higher, but nothing horrible. And I'll have my uh, shot back on, um, but it's on low, so it shouldn't be too terrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and run. Uh, I'll stop talking so you guys can watch the cut. Okay, that's it. Cut is done. I'm gonna switch over to another angle and we'll uh, discuss our, our, what just happened. All right, it doesn't get any smoother than that. <laughs> Seriously, I've already got everything mounted down here. I've got all my holes, but those are actually handle holes um, and some magnet holes so that I can close my doors and that sort of thing on, on this. The next cut I'm gonna be jumping into right after I finish up this video is I'm gonna actually cut the actual doors out uh, glue those onto my hinges and get them mounted onto my uh, rat rig uh, um, 3D printer. Um, I will probably do this again because I do have the second rat rig and I do want to immediately start closing it up uh, right when I start building it. So I'm going to probably repeat all of this one more time. But hope you have any. I hope that helped you understand what a spindle does and everything. It's just like a palm router, just quieter, more efficient, better torque. Um, and it's just nicer overall. Um, it, it much more convenient. I've got my um, spindle mounted inside of one of my 3D printed um, um, inserts, which turns my X Carbs 69 millimeter mount down to 65, so that I can mount my, uh, so that I can actually insert my my 
spindle into the into the router mount and it'll actually hold it still. Um, since I'm not terribly worried, I know many people will complain, hey, well, it's plastic. Well, I'm not cutting metal. I'm not cutting aluminum. I'm not, I don't need that fractions of a millimeter um, precision on this thing. I'm cutting wood, I'm cutting acrylic, um, hardwoods at most, um, that would probably be the hardest thing on it. So we've got plastic, compressed, in between plastic, so there's literally nothing that should be uh, rotating or anything like that. Everything's nice and tight and structured down. I have run this many times, um, measured, everything is perfectly fine for my needs, um, for my projects, so I'm not really concerned about that. If you are, reach out to, and if you had a DeWalt, you upgraded to my spindle, and you're using my insert, um, or if not, or if you're looking for a spindle, and you don't want to use the 3D printed insert to convert it. <laughs> Boy, if I can get all this out in one word, in one sentence, oh. Um, the, uh, reach out to your um, manufacturer who built your CNC machine. Um, so many machines are going to the Nikita, or at least providing a 65 millimeter mount, um, which is exactly what my spindles require. Um, their mounts are typically pretty cheap. 65, 85, you know, it's real cheap um, to get a new replacement mount, a smaller mount, if you've got the DeWalt palm router. If not, you're all set. If you've got a Makita already, or a, um, a Shapoko Carbide 3D um, router, palm router, um, those are both 65 millimeter uh, and already have a 65 millimeter mount. Therefore, it's literally just drop right in and you're up and running. Um, again, this thing can be converted. Um, well, I'll show you a couple of neat things. So this is removable and a simple Cat5 cable can be used to extend it. Now you notice it's running, so I can put this right back on and it picks right back up where the, uh, where the control went on. So if I needed to, I can pop that off, move it to a different location. You probably see it on my, there it is. Uh, actually, it's hard to see. Um, I've shared some pictures on it, but here I've got the spindle uh, controller right here on my, on my control screen for my Onefinity. You can do that. Um, again, just a Cat5 was what I used to extend it. Let me see any other questions. Um, so 0.8 and 1.5 spindles are available, water-cooled, um, air-cooled. Both of them are really nice. Um, I've got one hooked up to every one of my machines now, and I absolutely am in, in heaven with how nice it is. I can actually run a, see, I've got multiple circuits, so I could run more than one of these at the same time, well, more than one spindle at the same, or CNC machine at the same time, running different projects, all of them running spindles, and it's super quiet, um, really nice. So if you've got a CNC farm, um, really you should be looking into these things. And if you're not doing anything too terrible, you might actually go with the 0.8 versus the 1.5, just because of the slight quieter noise um, when it's operation, or when it's running and that sort of thing. So let's see. If you have any questions or comments, um, leave them below. If you want to reach out to us, um, Clinton has uh, volunteered to uh, help field questions with spindles and that sort of thing with support. Super cool. He joined the team. I'm super excited. Um, reach out to support at pwncnc.com. I'm happy to help you out. Um, and of course, come to PwnCNC.com to purchase your spindle, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, like and subscribe, do all that BS. You know, you know, the, you know the drill. Um, yeah, I hope to produce a couple more videos like this, and I'll see you later. Remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.